Today's video has a theme. Normally when I get an engine to tear down on the channel, whether it's a core return from an engine I've sold, or I go out and look for an engine to tear down specifically for the channel, I have no idea what's wrong with it. I mean, occasionally I find some with holes from a rod wanting to make an exit, but for the most part, the engines that come in here look like engines. You can't really tell from an outside visual what happened. I can tell what happened to this. It's it's broken. I don't know what it hit. I don't know if it crashed into a mountain, if it fell out of an airplane, or if it was drugged behind a truck. But it is the most broken engine I've had in here, maybe ever, on the outside. I have no idea what the inside looks like, but it's probably not much better. You see, my friend Pete, he's such a good friend of mine that he decided on our last big car swap, we'll get into that someday, that he was going to throw this motor in the back of the truck just because it looked fun to take apart. And I, I have to agree with him. This is going to be pretty interesting. As you can already tell, I wasn't kidding when I said it was broken. I, it gets even worse back here. This crash was so severe that it broke the transmission and ejected it in the crash. Pete did not even get a transmission when he bought this car from the auction. It came with part of the bell housing. So there's a few things that I wanted to look at before we even start taking anything apart. And that is, I don't know if this is gonna come apart. It has a chain on it, but it clearly, well, where's the end of it? Oh, there's the end. So it broke the chain and everything else I also found part of maybe the hood off that car. It looks like it was that paint. Yes, it's a wrap on top of paint. So this was a wrapped car that was gray. Cause that's a piece of aluminum from the hood. What caused this? Oh my God, the dipstick. This is giving, oh, it might be the easiest dipstick removal ever, but that's okay. I know it's drained because that's what the pan looks like. He even left me a note. I think the first thing I'm going to do is remove the intake plenum, the upper manifold and the throttle bodies, all of which are broke by the way. I'm also not sure what all this pink stuff is. This thing was either on fire and someone used a fire extinguisher or it crashed into a bunch of cotton candy. I'm not sure, but we'll get it off anyway. and. Find out what it looks like underneath. Guess we don't have to be too careful. Normally I don't cut nearly as much stuff, but this is all pretty rough. The next thing we're gonna do is try to get these coils out of the way so we can pull the spark plugs. Just move this carefully over here. I'll save that. The spark plugs look really nice. They look like they've been replaced recently. They're all the same kind. There's no bent straps. They all have about the same coloring. I, I think that these are in really good shape. Next, I'm gonna spend a minute and try to get the majority of this cut up, mangled up harness off of this engine. Oh yes, the dipstick loses. It's got part of the timing cover still on it. A 
Oh, the starter's still connected. Sometimes you just got to be a little extra gentle with it. Look at that. Now we just have the harness attached to the terminal on the alternator and the rest of it is off. So as you can see, a couple pieces of the timing cover have been liberated. And this is what we're left with that's still bolted on. There's a good amount of chain right there. But who knows if it did any internal damage? We are gonna find out. The next thing we're gonna do is remove the fuel rails and injectors. We're gonna get those off this lower manifold so we can pull that. I think this is a task for blue. You know what, let's just go off the valve cover since those are in such good shape. Oh, one injector stayed. Now we can unbolt this lower intake plenum. Well, the intake ports don't have any metal in them, and I don't see any any issues yet. There's some dust and dirt that fell in there from when I uh, pulled that lower intake manifold, but nothing yet. There's at least nothing jumping out at me. I don't know what that circular thing is, but I'm not going to worry about that. The next thing we're going to do is remove the clutch and flywheel so that we can get the bell housing off, which is the opposite order that you're supposed to do this, but that's what we're going to do. Oh, wait a minute. What is going on here? It's fine. I guess these have a dual mass. Looks like it. Well, we have a factory clutch, a likely destroyed flywheel. So the clutch has clearly seen better days. I'm sure it was driven really nice and easy. You know, just grandma driving her 350Z. Now we're gonna try to get this flywheel off. Okay, blue. Well, it, this is broken a lot. So this dual mass flywheel is absolutely annihilated. There's broken welds up here. It's kind of hard to see with the camera. And then, that was loud. Then there's like a, a bushing in here that's totally blown apart. I can't even get this to lay flat. That took a lot of force. And then on the other side, these are timing teeth for the crank sensor. And that's gone, that's bent, that's bent, that's bent. This was one hell of a crash. Now I guess we can remove what's left of the bell housing. One of those modular bell housings. You just kind of put it together yourself. Next, we're going to peel these exhaust manifolds off so that it's easier to get this on an engine stand. Now, 
Now that I've got this engine on a stand, it's time to strip the front of the engine. We're going to pull all of the accessories off. I know I've been corrected. People like to call them ancillaries, but that's not what they're called. They're accessories. I know they're not truck caps and fender flares, but if you call a salvage yard up and you buy an engine and you ask if it comes with ancillaries, they're going to ask what you're talking about. But if you say accessories, generally that means the rolling accessories. That's a really nice belt. Still good. Let's put this over here. Safe spot. The alternator is actually good. Now oh, the crank pulley. Well, let's get the big one. Actually, the CFR uh, Milwaukee will do the trick. I see. It's like that. Well, I can't really explain how much I don't like this, but I cannot find my three-fourths impact. Uh, my model specifically was the one without legs, but apparently it grew some. So I'm going to use a breaker bar on it, and again, I, I hate this because there's an, a chance that there's some valve to piston contact in here, and this might be doing more damage but we have to get this crank bolt off. And yet, it doesn't matter because nothing will stop this engine. Man. I'm having, uh, I'm having Land Cruiser flashbacks. I do have a loader still. I don't know how I'm gonna hold this crank still. So now I need to figure that out. I had to hold the crank still without screwing it up. I'm not positive this will work, but I threaded a couple bolts into the back of the crankshaft through the engine stand. It might be able to hold it. We'll find out. Here goes something. Yeah, not even a chance. Not even close. I guess we're going to have to flip this thing over and try to lock up the crank. Let's see if this is able to happen. I'm having my doubts here. Ah, oh, it's peeking all kinds of stuff. As you can see, the oil pan is um, it's shattered. So we're going to remove some of these loose pieces and see if we can find a way to safely lock the crankshaft. Wow. That bolt is bent pretty bad. Neat. See, see, that all looks really nice in there, so I don't really want to screw anything up. How are we going to do this? I might be able to jam a piece of wood in here. I placed a piece of wood strategically to where it's probably not going to work the first time, but it might. Okay. Now we're going to try the breaker bar. This might not work. Yes. That is really tight. I don't think it's Land Cruiser tight. So this will give you an idea of how big this breaker bar is. This is the biggest bar in the shop. But it did the trick. There's the bolt. And it annihilated the wood. It's fine, we'll deal with that later. Let's turn this engine back over. If I can. Now this crank pulley should just slide right off. Nice. The next thing I'm going to do is remove this variable valve timing plate. It's got the solenoids in it. And I want to know what it looks like when it's not smashed so I can compare it to the other side, which is very smashed. Dowels here. So 
So this engine is remarkably clean on the inside. I don't really see any damage on this particular side. But compare that to the other side, which looks like this. Ha, what is this? I'm going to have to hammer that out of there. I, I'm going to use a hammer and a chisel and see if I can knock whatever that is out of there. All right, let's just give it a little tap here. Oh, I have a feeling that's not attached to the cam anymore. What do you guys think? You don't think that movement is, is acceptable? What is this? Is this the center of this plate? Ah, oh, it's this piece. I don't know if this is going to come out. But it doesn't matter because it, clearly it's, it's, it's not attached to the cam anymore. Or at least all of it. This must have been the point of impact. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna attack that a different a different way by ignoring it. I am gonna remove the rest of this plate. Oh, that piece wasn't even attached. That side's still good. There's what's left of the chain. Sheared. I'm pretty sure that cam is um, it's not too happy, which means that the head is not too happy. But everything back here is broken anyway. It's it's just it's just total destruction. If it if it's on the front of this engine and it's in this area, it's broken. Now we're gonna get some of the bolts out of the timing cover. <coughs> Thermostat. That actually looks pretty good. Okay, Does it, this is the coolant tube that goes through the center of the valley. Okay, I think that's all the tens except for this one here. Now I just have some fourteens. Did I get them all? I don't know. Before I get too carried away prying, I'm pretty sure that there's a couple bolts I have to remove by pulling the lower and then at least the bolts out of the upper oil pan. So we're going to flip this engine over again and we're going to get that done. Before I can get all the bolts out, I actually have to chisel this lip of the pan away from the bolt. Now we're getting somewhere. We should be good now. Since it's already screwed up, might as well just keep on screwing it up. Oh, that's um, got some Milky Way fragments, lots. There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, some of it's identified. I'm just going to show you. So I'm not quite sure what part of the engine this is from. It's a big old piece of plastic. No idea. I don't think these are piston McNuggets. I don't really think that part of this engine is going to be damaged. This could all be from the timing cover, I guess. I'm just going to keep moving these chunks into the pan. There's more stuff down there. But there are the two bolts that need to come out so I can get this timing cover off. Now let's see if we can get this timing cover off. Okay, there's a very broken timing cover headed to the scrap bin. And I suppose we can get the rest of this timing chain out of here. What a waste of a beautiful chain. Oh well. 
can't save them all. There's a water pump. I'm sure it still pumps water. Here's your oil pump. This side looks pretty good. This side looks pretty bad. Suppose we can pull the water pump. Probably gonna make a mess, so we should probably be careful. This so O-ring is very, very tight as it should be. Oh yeah, that thing's like absolutely perfect. Here's a weep hole right there. Yes. Excellent. Rest of the timing cover. I guess we can pull this apart. That's probably not a wise idea, so let's do it. Oh no, there's stuff coming out of it. So there's some of the variable valve timing cam gear. Probably not supposed to pull these apart. Oh no, all the veins came out except for one. I caught one vein. That really didn't do me any good, did it? I really need to get the guts of that out or not. I think maybe we could just start tearing the valve covers off and pull the cams and I think this will just sort itself out. We're gonna start on the right or passenger side. It's really clean in here. I do think this engine was maintained. Removing the valve cover has revealed that I cannot pull the cams out of the head or remove the cam caps unless I pull this cover off. So I gotta get this rear front cover, the front of the, no, it's the rear timing cover. No, it's in the front of the engine. Whatever it is, this piece has to come off. So that, so that means I have to pull the cam gears off, which means I have to deal with that chunk of aluminum in the one cam gear. But I have an idea. So we're gonna to try to remove the exhaust cam gear. We're gonna see if it takes the tension off of this chain. And then if this is still attached, then we're screwed. But if it's not attached, we're gonna be okay. Okay, I need blue for this job. Well, it's not going so good yet. Just gotta get this off the cam. Or, or, or that happens, I mean, I'm okay with it. Look at that. Wow, cam gear with a free piece of cam. A pizza cam. Well, now you can see the extent of this damage. This is the cylinder head here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's the head, and it is broken. This cracked the head. Probably distorted this part. Oh yeah, it's broken all the way through here. Now for the side without destruction. Still need a little help from blue here, just because of this tensioner. Well, this side is much nicer. Now I'm gonna remove the surviving chain rail here. I thought that was going to be a little tighter. Things in really good shape. Now it's time to remove more 10 millimeters than I ever have, because there are a lot of them. Let's count. So I got 26. Does that seem right? Are there bolts that go up into? Oh yeah. There's some bolts on the bottom that go up into that. So let's get those out. 
I think these are 12 millimeters here. So 26, 10 millimeters, and two 12 millimeters. 284 millimeters of bolts that came off of this thing. Boy, it looks a lot less complicated now. <laughs> Here's what that looks like. Oh, I can't show that. Can't show that on camera. Now it is finally time, finally ready to crack some cam cap sluice. See, I'm getting better at this. Since this engine didn't blow itself up, I didn't really expect to find too much wrong with the good head. And I mean, it's dirty for me pulling this apart, but there's, there's no signs of metal run through this engine. Not on this side. The cams also look really nice. No major wear. Before I go any further, I'm actually gonna remove this coolant crossover pipe, which is also broken. Now it's time to crack the head bolts loose. And I'd like to talk about what type of head bolts these are. These are 10 millimeter hex or Allen head. And in my experience, these are the most prone to stripping and rounding out. They have the least surface area. I would much rather see a Torx, which is pretty uncommon for head bolts, or an external Torx or a triple square. Or maybe just a regular headed bolt, you know, it's crazy. This should just come right off. Or... It's definitely a dowel. There we go. I don't see any marks from valve to piston contact. The bores look really nice. Pistons look good, they're just dirty. This looks really nice on this side. There's still another side. Head also looks good. No issues with any of the valves. This is definitely something I can resell. Now here's the passenger side head. You can see there's the broken cam. And look at the cracks in the casting. Lots of damage here. So let's get this peeled apart and see if anything survived. I'm actually going to get some of these coolant lines out of the way. Now we can get the valve cover off. Wow, look how it jammed the cams back into the cylinder head. These are supposed to be centered, these journals, and the whole cam, both cams have been driven backwards, especially this intake cam. This is what I'm talking about. These cams are supposed to be centered. I'm actually gonna unbolt this front piece here, get this broken stuff out of the way and see if these cams will slide this way, but I have my doubts. That bolt's bent. That bolt's bent. Wow. So I don't think those are gonna come back. I'm gonna give them a little, little tap. Just a little, little tap. No, it's gonna take more than that. Well, 
that one moved, but we're just going to have to blast the caps off. Oh, that one was unhappy. Uh oh, 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 okay. So it broke both cams. So we have we have this piece, and then we might as well get these caps out of the way. These are junk now. That's like seven eighths of a race cam right there. Pretty clean break. It took quite a hit to do that. Now we gotta get these off. Oh, that was under some tension. Wow. It, that really screwed up these cam caps. Well, at least the rear one. So two broken cams, and wow, the head is bad. Look at that crack in the journal right there. That's uh, that's not good. And I can already tell you it's going to have some bent valves. You can see how these are still depressed, which means that the valves are still down. There's nothing pushing them down except for the fact that they won't return since they're bent. Here is a better look at the damage to the head. You can see the entire part of that head has been pushed in. It's cracked here. And the big crack there. Another crack up here, right there. Boy, I hope the pistons are okay. I did want to make sure that these head bolts weren't bent. They don't appear to be. Let's see if this head will just lift right off. Yeah, right. Is that front dowel? I think we're okay here. Everything's still connected pretty well. Man, the cross hatching is really nice on this engine. This side looks just as good as the other. Cross hatching looks nice. A little bit dirty for pistons, but not bad. I expected to find some dings in this piston from making contact with the valve, and I don't really think it did any damage, which is pretty impressive considering the valves are bent. So there's the valves. You can see those are hung open. But the rest of the head looks okay on this side. I kind of wanted to look around where the dolls were. Because if they were kind of wallered out, that would mean this whole head casting shifted backwards in that accident, but I don't think it did. Now we're going to flip this thing upside down again so that we can pull the remnants of the oil pan. And I guess we'll turn this over and get our piece of wood out. First things first, let's pull this wood out. Now, let's pull this pan, because if this lower block is damaged from this accident, this whole thing's coming apart. If it's not, I might leave it as a short block that someone can go through. Oh, okay. Little, little much in the force there. So there's lots of crap here, but we're going to pull the windage tray and kind of spray this down and see what it looks like. Ah, beautiful. This actually looks really nice in here. I mean, I did wash some junk back in here, but it can all be cleaned out. I don't see any signs of any damage. Nothing's come apart. 
I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull rod caps off and check the bearings. You know, it could be completely unrelated that this might have some bearing issues. It's not like VQs are ever known for having any bearing problems ever. And other jokes you can tell your friends on a Saturday night. As always, we're going to start at the front of the motor. You never go back to front. A little tamp. Well, that bearing actually looks pretty good. We're going to loosely reassemble here. Pretty much the same story on that side. Cylinder number three. Looks pretty good, just like one and two. Of course, whoever goes through this will likely put new bearings in here. Uh oh, the bearing stayed on the journal. But it's fine. Looks pretty good, actually. And it's the final two. A little more wear, but not bad. The journals look nice. Cylinder six, the most wear of them all, but still a really nice looking bearing considering what happened to this engine. Before I call this a good buildable short block, I want to remove the motor mount brackets to make sure none of the bosses are screwed up. Oh, they're all good on this side. And there's smoke coming off the bosses, but I don't see any damage at all. I think this block is okay, which is amazing considering what happened. Yeah, these bores look really nice. I don't think this engine was ever stored outside, which is n very good for me. I don't really see any vertical scratches. This is the piston that made contact with two intake valves, and I don't think it did any damage at all to that piston. And here's the other bank. There's a little bit of wear at the bottom of the bore. Some vertical scratches, but it's not bad. It might even clean up with a single dingleberry hone or something like that. The rest of this looks pretty decent. It's definitely a good builder. Now, I am often asked to drop a camshaft, and I don't like breaking parts that I can sell, but this is kind of already broken, so we're going to kind of see what happens here. I'm just going to look away. And there you have it. That went a lot better than I expected. When I first saw this engine, I pretty much thought I'd get a couple rods and pistons out of it and a video, and that everything else would end up in the scrap bin. But as I peeled the layers and layers of broken parts off of this engine, it revealed that only one head took the brunt of the damage. The rest of that engine actually looked pretty good. I think what happened here is that whoever was driving this car, they might have lost control, and out of habit, they probably put their foot on the clutch, which let the engine go to idle or close to idle, and that's when it hit whatever it did and snapped the chain. Because if this had snapped the chain at four, five, six thousand 5, 6,000 RPM, this would have been a completely different teardown. We would have seen lots of bent valves, a lot more malice in the combustion palace, lots of damaged pistons, but only two bent valves in this case, that tells me this was a low RPM snap. That just goes to show you that there are multiple ways people can destroy their engines. It doesn't have to be starving it of oil or over revving it or sucking in water. You can wreck your engine by literally wrecking your car, which is what happened here. It was a wrapped 350Z with exhaust and intake. I'm sure they weren't doing anything crazy.
Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Who would use that short block? Well, for starters, if I had a 350Z and it needed an engine and I had good top end, I would absolutely use this short block. I don't see any issues with that. However, I have to sell this to somebody else. So I'm going to sell this as a builder, which means that it should go to a machine shop, make sure the deck surfaces are flat, make sure that those head bolt threads are in good shape. That might have taken some force, so it should definitely be looked at. But we didn't see any bearing wear. The, the cross hatching was still pretty good in the bores. I think that's a good buildable block, which is a lot better than I expected. If you'd like to buy parts off of this engine, which there are a few, or anything else I've torn down, I'm going to leave our email in the video description. You can also go to importapart.com and you can search what we have currently listed. If you don't see what you'd like, you can fill out a request form, which sends us an email with exactly what you're looking for. If you'd also like to buy parts off of this 2001 Forerunner, this just came in, should be inventoried by the time this video goes up. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.